mid-court stripe. Love to Jones, but Jones biffs it on the rim. And Piedmont will counter up seven. Three minutes to go. Love and Jones, both with four fouls and both still out there for the Centurions. Right wing jumper, Glenn, three, glancing blow off the backboard. And it kicks down to Jones, will hand off to Love. Missed opportunity there. Lead is seven with 2.44 to play. Austin Robinson lobs it down low for Jones. Kick it cross court. Goolsby drives baseline, nearly steps out of bounds, finds a cutting Robinson in the lane for the easy bunny. And it's down to five. This is the closest it's been since the first half. Two and a half minutes to go. Bruins have gotten a little complacent on the offensive end the last couple of trips. Need to get something going toward the rim here instead of settling for a three. Marcus Ingram has fouled out. It's Carter, Glenn, Robinson, Bishop, and Neal. A five on the floor for Josh Howard. Carter with the basketball gets a screen. Goes right side for Robinson. With nine on the shot clock. Brings it back out. Robinson dribble drive in the lane. Puts up the tough runner off the glass. No rebound. Ping balls around. Carolina's got it. And then a whistle and a foul as Robinson got hit hard in the back of the head by Carter going over the back. And that will send Robinson to the free throw line for the one and one. Similar to the Bruins, the free throw line has been an adventure tonight for this Carolina Christian team. And the front end of the one and one is always very telling as we come into the final two minutes of this game. Four on Carter, seven for both sides with 2.03 to play. It was a two-point nail-biter controversial decision on the north side of the city back at the end of January. It went to the Centurions. This one's getting tighter here down the stretch. First one, no good. And the Centurions not on the lane, give Glenn the rebound. Five-point lead under two to play for Piedmont. They have not trailed tonight. Colton Bishop, who had a fire-blazing first half, relatively quiet here in the second. He'll give it off to Robinson. Back to Bishop. They play catch at the top. Robinson with 10. Back to Robinson. Check that. Robinson to Bishop. Now Bishop, right wing three. In and out. It popped all the way back out. And the rebound knocked out of bounds. It'll go to Carolina. Bishop thought for sure that that was down as he kind of held it, thinking that he had that one. It just pops out. But a missed opportunity for the Bruins to put some more distance between themselves and the Centurions as this lead continues to evaporate. Now you got to get a stop defensively. And again, they didn't run much of an offensive set there. They just played catch at the top. Robinson for Carolina leaves it off. Love right wing for three. He got it. 66-64, it's a one possession game for the first time since the first few minutes. 1-10 to play. Glenn across the timeline, bounces it to Neal. He throws it away. Love has it, one on four. Love, he has it stripped from his hands, but he's fouled. Oh, I don't know about that. That looked like a good clean strip by Tamir Glenn right there at the free throw line. But that again, Free throw line has been an adventure. This is just going to be a one and one. As much as Carolina Christian should feel good about themselves getting back into this game, they've got to make free throws here, and they'll have an opportunity to tie this game. That is a rough turnover, and Robert Neal's going to take a seat because of it. This is where you miss Marcus Ingram. Down the stretch here is fouled out. Keont Jones will come in, who has been a massive benefactor in this second half. Artavius Love for the front end of the one and one. Got it. He's been good at the free throw line. One of the few for this Centurion team. Now three for three at the stripe. And this one a chance to tie the game with one minute straight up left to play. Eight team fouls on Piedmont. Seven on Carolina to tie it. Got it. Tied for the first time since tip off. A minute to go. 66 up, 66 down. And again, the Bruins have been very, very stagnant offensively. The last few trips down the floor trying to run the clock out. Carter goes right wing, goes baseline to Bishop, leaves it off. Robinson for three, no. Rebound loose, Bishop has it, loses it in the corner. He gets it, it knocked off out of bounds and he's fouled. Colton Bishop always finds ways to impact the game. In the first half it was scoring. Here it's a huge offensive rebound after the missed three by Robinson. That was as good a look as the Bruins were gonna get. And now Bishop, who is 0 for 2 at the line tonight, and again, the free throw line has been an adventure for both sides. A chance to give the Bruins the lead. This will just be another one and one. The fourth on Austin Robinson. Two for four, I should say, at the line for Bishop. To get the lead back, Bishop. No. 
And the rebound, Artavius Love. 39 seconds to play. Tied at 66. And a 10 second difference game to shot clock. Artavius Love was held silent in the first half, has 11 in the second. He goes high left, wants a high screen, spins to the top of the key, loses it, loose in the backcourt, chase after it, diving for it, out of bounds, who's got it? It is... Oh, did they call a foul on Tamir Glenn? I think they did. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You, you just, you never see that foul ever called. When two guys go think, diving for the ball. I don't think they did. I think they got Austin Robinson for the foul. And they did. Oh, initially I thought they pointed at Tamir Glenn to say the foul was on him, but you're right. And I actually think it's on Love. It is. It's on Artavius Love, who dove for the ball with Tamir Glenn. And that's his fifth, and he's out of here. It was the dribble that kicked off of the left foot of Glenn and rolled into the backcourt. And now Love is out of the game, getting fouled out Which with 19.2 seconds remaining. And Tamir Glenn will head to the free throw line for the one and one, tied at 66. And now this is just a one and one. That's important to note. The other side of this now is that uh, Carolina Christian is out of timeouts. If Glenn misses this, the Centurions are going to have to get up the floor without their best player and figure out the offense from there. The Bruins will put one on the lane for a rebound, it looks like, and Antoine Robinson, everyone else has set it up at the midcourt strike. Glenn for the lead. No good. Rebound loose in the paint. Christian Jones has it. And now Carolina will shoot for the win with 14 seconds remaining. Austin Robinson brings it across the line. With nine, with eight, with seven. He's not moving with five, with four. Gets a screen with three, with two. Loses it with one. Let's it fly at the buzzer. No good. And we are going to overtime in Winston-Salem. Oh, my goodness. Did Keon Jones get away with a blocking foul on that one there that the officials, fortunately for the Bruins, swallowed their whistles to keep this game tied at 66 and send it to overtime. Is that, uh, we've seen that called a few times tonight, Corey, where Keon went over there to cut off Robinson and there was clear contact and a lot of it, more than we've seen in some other cases on foul calls tonight, but the officials let it go. Robinson kind of bouncing off of Keon Jones and then in the aftermath had to kind of force one up, still nearly threw it in, but now we're gonna play an extra five minutes and we'll see if the Bruins who had two chances to end this game at the free throw line and did not, can pull themselves back together and play another five minutes. The again, lead. important to note, though, before we start here, that again, without Artavius Love on the floor for the Centurions, that means the offense is going to have to come from somewhere else. 66 all after 40 minutes of play. The lead at one point was 13 in the second half for Piedmont, and it slipped away. Seven-point halftime lead has been eaten into. And now, we'll play some more. We'll jump it off here at center circle and switch sides of the floor. It's okay, everyone's a little exhausted. We can get a little <laughs> bit weary there. Mark Artavius Love and Marcus Ingram have both fouled out of this game. Plenty of guys with four. The tap's up in the air. It's won by Carolina Christian, but out of bounds it flies. And it go go to the Centurions. Well, they got that right, because Keon Jones, what he tried to do instead of tapping that back, he tried to tap it forward to Tamir Glenn, who was trying to sneak his way behind the crowd off the tip-off. So they got that correct. Centurions move from right to left here in this extra session. It'll be Austin Robinson, Darius Goolsby, Jonathan Cunningham, Gerard Johnson, and Christian Jones on the floor for the Centurions. Jones has it, right wing being hounded by Jones, by Keont Jones, and a five second call. He didn't move the ball at all. And that's so the, turnover that's, force right off the shoot. I'm not sure what Carolina Christian is thinking there. Obviously with Love out of the game, Christian Jones is your next best option offensively, but he's not a perimeter guy. You gotta get him down low. Nash Carter to Bishop, thought about the three, goes to Robinson, drives up top. Carter wants a three, got it! 69-66, Piedmont strikes first in overtime. Carter's been a big time closer for this team this season. Let's see if he can do it here. Has been quiet tonight, but a big shot there to open the scoring in overtime. Glenn, Robinson, Bishop, Jones, and Carter. A small lineup on the floor for Piedmont here. 50 seconds gone in overtime. Cunningham drives right of the lane, puts up the tough shot, the side of the rim, no rebound, kick to the far side off of the hands of 
Darius Goolsby, who saves it from the baseline, but flings a right to Nash Carter. And Carter will bring it up, up by three for the Bruins. Centurions tried to get it into Christian Jones that time, but the Bruins did a good job, sent a double team at him in the post, fronting him and having him from the side to keep the ball away. Bounce pass, Bishop weaves in the lane. Floater, no, rebound punched up in the air and comes down to Christian Jones, playing with four fouls. He'll leave off for Austin Robinson. Robinson in the lane, up and under layup, no, but he's fouled. And that'll be Carter's fifth. And so now the premier offensive players for both sides will be off the floor as Carter got caught reaching in that time. And so now <laughs> both sides will have to answer the question, where is the offense going to come from here? If you had to wager for the Bruins, you got to feel like the responsibility, the onus in this game now is going to fall to maybe Tamir Glenn. Nobody really knows who's coming onto the floor right now for Piedmont. Someone's got it. There's only four out there right now. Coach right. Howard. He's looking at Troy Mix, but now he'll come on, who initially <laughs> made a break for it. So that's the second Bruin to foul out with 3.34 to play in overtime. Team fouls sit at nine apiece. They do not reset here for overtime. So next foul either side is the double bonus. Both sides do get a timeout back, though, to start this overtime. Shooting foul for Robinson. He'll get two. 69-66, PIU in front. Robinson, the freshman out of Atlanta, gets the first. Again, free throws have been a, <laughs> a circus in this game for both sides tonight. But now, all of a sudden, the Centurions starting to settle things down and made their last three at the strike. To make it a one-point game. Got it. Four straight now. 69-68 to score, 3.33 to play in the overtime. Samir Glenn gets a screen from Jones, goes right, bounces it right side for Bishop. Baseline to under the basket, will bring it back around. Troy Mix to Antoine Robinson, nearly loses the handle, goes to Bishop, swing it around Glenn, tews up a three, got it. Second three of the overtime for Piedmont. Four-point lead, 72-68. We figured Glenn might be the focal point now. Austin Robinson bumped, tough Ooh. shot off the window and good. Oh, wow. how did that shot go? That is a tough angle shot right there. Bounced right off of Colton Bishop and still got it to go. 72-70, 2.55 to play. Left-handed dribble for Colton Bishop. Gets a screen. One of the deep three thought wiser of it. Now Glenn has it right wing. Up top, Bishop. Antoine Robinson. Turned his ankle earlier in the game. Back out there here in overtime. Glenn, a second three. In and out. Rebound. Nix has it. Nix will tip it back out to Bishop. Swing it around Robinson. Left side, Jones. Baseline off the glass. Got it. Where will this team be tonight without Keon Jones in the second half in overtime? He's got his first bucket of the extra sessions. Back to four. Key factor there. Christian Jones did not want to give the foul. Jones puts up the shot. Bump fouled. And he got it to drop. And that's why. Christian Jones playing with four fouls, pretty much elected to give that basket to Keont Jones so that he could stay in the game as he's been kind of the, the lone real offensive weapon left on the floor for this Centurion team. Goes down the other end and scores an and one against Jones. Third on Keont, 10th on the team for the and one. No off the back rim. 74, 72, 217 remaining in overtime. Piedmont moves from left to right. Glenn, right corner for Robinson, bring it up high. Keont Jones, top of the key, goes to Bishop. Colton Bishop gets a screen and eases to the top. To Robinson, drives, kicks it right corner. Glenn wanted the three, he'll leave it off for Bishop. Instead, right wing with five on the shot clock. With four, with three, Bishop tries to pass cross court, goes to Mix, gotta let it fly at the buzzer. Good at the three! Seventy-seven, seventy-two. Robinson bumped and fouled. He'll head to the line. Oh my, what a bailout shot for Troy Mix. Boy, and I don't think he even realized it. And if he had been on the other end of the floor without his coach screaming at him to shoot the basketball, I'm not sure they ever get that shot up. But Mix just kind of got in the air and double clutched it and somehow got that to go. His first bucket of the night. Austin Robinson at the free throw line. Good on the first. Tamir Glenn gets his second foul. 138 to play, 77-73. Robinson with another for Carolina Christian. Front of the iron, no. 
No Centurions on the lane, all mixed with a rebound. So the lead stays at two possessions now as we enter the final 90 seconds, and now this is an opportunity for the Bruins to take this down and try to get a good shot, potentially end this game. Samir Glenn brings it between the rings to Bishop. Left side, wants a screen from Jones and will take it. Goes up to that for three, back of the iron, no. Rebound all Carolina Christian in the far corner. Coach Howard not thrilled with that particular shot. Jonathan Cunningham, who has been terrific tonight, will leave it off. Robinson bumped, elbow, floater, good. It's down to two, 75-77. The deficit here for Carolina Christian under a minute to go. Now again, you need to run offense here. This is what got them in trouble in the at the end of the second half was they kind of went to sleep with that eight-point lead in the final two minutes. And it got them in trouble the last possession as well. Samir Glenn gets a screen, goes top, goes into the lane, jump stop to Jones, right corner Robinson with nine, up top for Glenn, fires the three, got it! Second three of overtime for Tamir, five point lead, 80 to 75, 32 seconds to play. Jones leaves it off, all alone, Goolsby missed the bunny, rebound to Jones, and he'll bring it aside, leaves it off for Robinson, all alone for the layup, good! 82-75, top of the key, three, Robinson, no, mix, Skies with a rebound, and he's got it, and he's fouled. And now a whistle and a technical as an altercation after that. With 10 seconds to play, Piedmont is going to pull this one out of the fire. Popped up a 14-point lead in the second half. But in the overtime, finally, the offense comes back to life. The three-pointer by Carter to lead things off. The first of four of them in this overtime period, including that dagger by Tamir Glenn. That was one of those no, 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 okay kind of shots. Almost off balance, essentially. At the end of the shot clock, it goes down, and that might be the dagger. As now up seven with 10 seconds to play. The Bruins on their way to avenging a loss they felt like they shouldn't have taken the first time these two teams met. But one thing is for sure, Corey, in their first year of existence with this uh, Carolina Christian College team, the Twin Cities, Twin City Shootout is for real. Or the Twin City Classic, I should say. This has been something else here tonight. Two games, two fun games. There's some sorting out to be done here. Well, because that's the, the, I think they're deciding whether or not that's a one and one or a two shot foul. Well, it's gonna be the 10th team foul regardless. I think the debate here is how many technicals it has issued, which could have a little bit of a factor here. Troy Mix got the foul on the receiving end, so he'll head to the free throw, and he's going to shoot a couple of technicals here. It looks like Austin Robinson got pegged for the personal foul, it looks like. So he's out. Mix of the free throw line is good. And he'll get another here. One for two at the line for Mix here on the technical attempt. And now he'll get the foul and shoot the two free throws in the personal. So it's 83-75. Change the scoreboard here, please, kids. They got it right. That's the correct score. 82-75? Yep. Oh, no, you're right. It's not. It's 83-75. 83-75. You're correct. It is most definitely 83-75. And now Troy Mix will get to shoot the two free throws here for the common foul. That one was on Gerard Johnson, and that was his fifth. Yeah, so Austin Robinson, Gerard Johnson, and Artavius Love have all fouled out of the game, which means for the second time in as many games tonight, one team is going to finish the ball game with less than five players. Gerard Johnson, I don't think, realized the foul was on him. He's now just coming off the floor. Troy Mix with maybe the biggest shot of the night, bailing out the shot clock with a desperation three from the left wing that made it a four-point game. And then Tamir Glenn drained a triple right after that to put this game on ice. But Mix will head to the free throw line for two shots here. With 10 seconds remaining in overtime, and Piedmont's going to walk out of here with win number 12. And it's a really important win number 12 as they come down the stretch. Again, have to finish above 500 to give themselves a chance to play in the national tournament. Now look like they are at least in business to do that. Three games remaining after tonight. They will need to win at least one of those. Mix hits the first and the second. 
10 point lead with 10 seconds to play. Cunningham will bring it up floor casually. He'll just fire a deep three from the top. Nearly got it. <laughs> and the rebound picked up by Jones. That'll do it. What a game this was. And what a win for Piedmont. 85-75. They knocked off Carolina Christian tonight. We continue in to see. One of the best ball games of the season. We continue to see wild games in this building. It's been the case all season long. Tonight, no exception. Terrific ball game, and the Bruins, despite coughing up that 14-point advantage in the second half, able to find a way to win it here tonight. Stay tuned, folks. We'll hear from a victorious head coach, Josh Howard, and our player of the game. We got a lot to choose from there, so stick around. This is the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. It has enriched me in ways I just never thought the PhD program would. I have a nuclear engineering technology bachelor's degree. I got an MBA from a secular school, and I knew that there was a whole Christian aspect of leadership. You read the books about Nehemiah, David, uh, Christ himself. And so I wanted to build that into my learning and knowledge, so I started looking for a Christian college. Piedmont comes across my computer, and they're on the top of all these lists, best this, top that, top 25, top. And I said, okay, this school seems to have a reputation for academic excellence. The professors, the relationships we're building, and the leadership program is second to none. I'm able to use every single class I've taken in my business, and my business has grown. Not only my business, but I'm able to do community development and train other leaders, young leaders, middle-aged leaders, you know, older leaders, and then I'm able to pass on leadership abilities and skills, you know, to other people. This program has a number of key strengths. Depending on which concentration, whether it's education or business or, or ministry, because it's a terminal degree, a PhD, it opens doors of opportunity. God can use this program in so many different ways. In pastoral ministry, it can open doors to greater opportunities to share Christ in, in different contexts. In, in organizational management, it opens doors to new leadership positions. Some, for many of our students, that's, that's been their, their story. And in educational administration, it has done the same as well. Since I've been in the program, um, the flexibility of the schedule, because I've, I had to relocate from one end of the country to the other. I had to go to China for two adoptions. Uh, last year, my daughter had open heart surgery. So we've been able to work around that. PIU students, they walk the talk. The professors, they walk the talk. So they lead by example, and therefore their students just emulate and lead by example in the communities they come from. It's just that simple. To know that not only are my professors top notch, not only do they know, you know, everything in their field, they're leaders in their field, they're knowledgeable, they're guiding you, they're praying for you. And to know that makes all the difference in the world. It's cost effective, it got the goal of having the Christian aspect brought into leadership and how that fits all together, and then the staff support. But if you make the decision and you decide to come, it's the best decision you'll ever make and you will not be the same afterwards. I knew I had made the right decision. Five seventy-five. The final score is Piedmont International wins an overtime thriller with Carolina Christian College. Corey Glor and Dave Shook back with you. Joined now on the floor by the victorious head coach Josh Howard in this one. And coach, you've been through a lot of basketball in your life. This team never trailed when we went to overtime. Is that a new one for you? It actually isn't a new one for ah. us. But at the same time, like I always preach, finish the game. You know, we thought we was going to walk into a win and not think that they was going to come back. Great team. They already done proven that they can beat us on our home court. So the mentality, mentality excuse me, is to kill, kill, kill. This team just, this Carolina team was not going to go away. Yeah. And we saw that time and time again, especially at the end of regulation there when the Bruins had a shot to win it, couldn't quite put it together. Mm -hmm. But in overtime, this team maybe played some of its best basketball of the night. Yes, and I think that just comes from me getting them back in the mindset 
Uh, we do a lot of drills where I put time up on the clock and make the scoring even to make my guys, you know, constantly think about trying to come back. So um, just practicing the way we play is the big part of my, my teaching philosophy. Yeah, to deal with Marcus Ingram falling out pretty early in that second half, mm -hmm. and that gave Keon Jones a lot of time in that second. I thought he was crucial for this team. Hitting a couple shots, playing defense. He was the unsung hero tonight. Unsung hero and a guy that I've been waiting to see blossom. Um, as you can tell, I'm looking for guys to come off the bench and help my starter guys, but they got to want it. And Kiat is one of those guys that definitely told me his story before he came here. I loved it, and I wanted him on the team. And like you say, what perfect time to now to step up and get ready to play great ball going into the conference tournament. You have a team where there's so many guys you want to see have the ball in your hands when the game's on the line. And Tamir Glenn in that overtime just put on a show, didn't put he? Put on the show. And it's crazy to say that, too, because he was talking to me about what he used to do in high school. And I told him we were the same type of guy because we loved that, that moment. And uh, just to have a guy like him and Antoine and just, just the overall team and their excitement about playing for him has been awesome. After how this meeting ended about a couple weeks ago on the north side of the city, how good, it's not just getting a win here tonight. This one has to feel really good to bounce back after what happened a few weeks ago. Very good. Um, like I tell my guys, just be ready to play night in and night out because guys be ready to beat us. So for them to step in and have their mind right was awesome today. Um, like I say, we gave the crowd a thriller, a good game to watch. So hopefully next game won't be that crazy on Saturday. This was a heck of a game, Coach. Congratulations on the win. Warren Wilson coming in Saturday. Another huge game coming Another up here in just a couple game. days. Yeah, we put up 100-plus points, and I know they're definitely a team that can score the ball. Uh, we just got to focus on defense. I'm trying to debate if I'm going to get the guys off tomorrow. <laughs> I'll keep y'all posted on that. <laughs> but I'll let those guys know in a few. <laughs> Coach, congratulations on the win. Man. Thank you, sir. That's Coach Josh Howard after this 85-75 victory tonight over the Carolina Christian Centurions. We're awaiting Tamir Glenn to join us down on the floor as well, who will be our player of the game. Turns out leading the Bruins with 16 points in this one, one of five in double figures when all was said and done. And Tamir Glenn with two huge threes in that overtime, including the dagger three with under a minute to play to sew up this win win number 12 on the season. He well, is. and that came after Nash Carter had fouled out of the game, and so we were wondering where the offense was going to come from as a guy who can create his own shot, and that's certainly Tamir Glenn who joins us now. Yep, Tamir Glenn joins us now down at center court, and boy, this was a fun game to watch. I'm sure it was fun to play. At times intense, I'm sure, but boy, this was an exciting game, and you had a whale of a night. Thank you, thank you. That overtime session, you drained a couple threes, including what turns out to be the dagger, as it turns out. This team seemed to really come together in overtime after not being able to put this game away in regulation. It was a tough game. Uh, attention was flaring. Uh, Nash, Nash, they was in Nash head. I tried to get him back in, but he did his best to keep playing. But we came together as a team, and we got it done. You had to, just telling your coach about this, you had to deal with Marcus Ingram not in for the majority of that second half due to being fouling out. Then you have a guy like Keon Jones come in, and he just picks up the torch and did so many little things in that second half to help keep that lead out and eventually get this win. That's what I told him. I told Keon he to play the game because he, he was the X Factor. He came got the rebounds over the big man. I was surprised. This type of game, it turned into a high-octane, fast-paced game. You guys are more than comfortable playing that way, but Carolina loves to play that way, too. When this gets up and down, though, you guys get to feel no group, don't you? Yes. It's, that's what we love to do, fast-paced. Coach wants us to push the pace, but be under control at the same time. What was the, the – they're playing mostly zone here tonight with their roster that small and their size that they have. That's what they play. What were you seeing as the point guard, as the shooting guard, as the guy running the show to try and break through that throughout the I would game? tell the team to get the ball to the middle, set a screen top, Swing, swing, middle, and the middle will set it up. Either go to the hole or dish it back out wide open. This game, this meeting a few weeks ago was contentious. It was controversial with how it ended, and it was a tough loss. This has to feel extra special to get this type of win tonight against this team. Yes, yes. I wish we could have got it during the, uh, the cup. We could have got the cup. Well, hey, one, one out of two ain't bad here tonight against this club. And now Warren Wilson comes in Saturday. Another tall task and another big opportunity to get another win. Yes, sir. Congrats, Tamir, on a great game. Thank you. Y'all have a blessed day. Me too. Thank you. Tamir Glenn, 16 points, one of five and double figures here for the Bruins. as the, They win it tonight in overtime, 85-75 to over Carolina Christian.
College. Big win tonight for the Bruins, like you mentioned. Certainly felt good to, to get back after the, the, the loss the first time these two teams saw each other. As our post-game player interview there brought to you by uh, Gateway Pharmacy of Kernersville. We'll take one last time out here for tonight. We'll come back and wrap things up after this here on the Bruins Sports Network from Sports Live. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. 360 in the contract. Never that. I just take the contact. I bring it back. I'm running on the fast break behind the back. Yeah, this that, this that, this that penny with yeah. the shack. If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back. They never gave a hand, now they want to give me that. I don't know where you been. I got fear of God. Ain't no fear of man. At least them air mini Yeah, need a pair of them. LA, 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 man, I feel like magic. LA, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West, West, Brook, on yeah. the isolation. Yeah. So New York City got to keep it, me keep man, oh, uh. The bubble jacket with the pippy winkle camo, uh. From Argentina, it's a military issue. Uh. And Lord said, don't mix the pickle with the shit, so don't. Do it. I just threw it off the backboard. Game winner, I'm the one they asked for. Magic. shop here tonight what was a lengthy and entertaining finish to this doubleheader 85 75 as the Piedmont men take care of Carolina Christian in overtime here tonight Corey Glore Dave Shook back with you Piedmont splits this doubleheader as the women fell earlier tonight to Johnson and Wales a doubleheader back at it Saturday here in Winston-Salem as Warren Wilson is in town for both we will not be on the air for that one so make sure you get on out here to the gym to see more doubleheader action for your Bruins Monday we'll be back on the air here across the network five o'clock another doubleheader Mid-Atlantic Christian will take on the Piedmont women and then the men will take the floor after that to take on Pfeiffer Dave Shook will be on the call beginning at five o'clock Monday night certainly hope you can join us that Want to thank our producer, engineer, and guy in charge of all the technical stuff, Mason Cox, along with each and every one of you for tuning in here tonight, wherever you might be, however you might have tuned in. Thank you for spending your Thursday night with us. For my partner, Dave Shook, I am Corey Glore. Once again, your final scores tonight in game one, it was Johnson and Wales 66, Piedmont International 48. And in game two, it was Piedmont International 85, Carolina Christian 75 in overtime. And you heard it all right here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Good night, everyone. University invites you to an evening of worship with the Vertical Worship Band. Vertical Worship in concert Friday, February 16th, 7 p.m. at Triad Baptist Church in Kernersville. An evening with Vertical Worship, Friday, February 16th, hosted by Piedmont International University. For tickets or more information, visit piedmontu.edu.